Good morning, interwebs. It is 3.53. I am in Manhattan. I went to acupuncture at 2. This morning we were canning and doing things around the house and trying to resuscitate our computer. It is now, it now seems to be working, so that is good. Then I, like I said, came to acupuncture, then I went to Wendy's and had lunch by myself. It was pleasant. And then I came over to Goodwill where I found a bunch of books. So. I got another Andrew Clements book. He's the one that wrote A Week in the Woods and Frindle. We really, really like his books. So I got that. Room one, a mystery or two. Then there are 20 <laughs> babysitter little sister books in here. I called to make sure my daughter would want them. And she said, yes, yes. So went ahead and got those because I knew we had one but I knew that I did not have those from my collection from when I was that age. I read a bunch of them from the library, but I did not personally own them, so we do not own them now. I was glad to pick those up. I also got a Wii game, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Brave, because we have a Wii, and the kids are interested now in doing some games that have a bit more to them. Steve said, because I called to check, that the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer game he'd heard about, and that it had, like, activities and things. So, that's a thing. And I got... Doo -doo -doo. Indian Tribes of North America coloring book. And the Dover coloring books I find useful for history lessons and such. And even if I don't, sometimes some of the things in them can be a little problematic, but they're good discussion starters. So it's a nice visual way to start that discussion. And I was going to head back home, but first I think I'm gonna go over to Tuesday morning. I don't usually find things on Tuesday morning, but I, I feel like I should get some steps in and like I want to go take a look around. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll head back home. <laughs> so much for I don't buy things at Tuesday morning. I bought a bunch of stuff at Tuesday morning. However, I'm not gonna tell you everything I got because the kids watch me edit these and most of what I purchased uh, was for them. But I will tell you why I purchased things for them. So, we homeschool, as most of you know, and there are a lot of things about public school, which I experienced growing up, that I find, I don't know, less than pleasant or are not good positive memories for me. However, I do have good memories of a little game that teachers like to play where they give your table like points and things, though I did think a lot of it was really arbitrary and kind of dumb. But just the idea of the end of the week and you put all the points together and then you get prizes. And so, the kids have kind of been amassing points for the work that they do with this um, kind of uh, like goal that I told them. I said, you know, when you get to a certain number of points, I will award you a prize. Note, I did not tell them what that number was because I had not determined it yet. And I told them that I had something in mind but had not procured it yet. So I didn't have the prize either, but now I do. I got two prizes per kid. and. What I remember from school is that those prizes usually came out of a treasure box and were basically junk. Like they were super cheap and that totally made sense because the teachers always got them with their own money or they were just like free little things they had laying around and you know. So it always made sense that they were that way. Well, that is not something I have to worry about in the same way because I only have three students and I don't really want that trash in my house. So I got things that I think are good and usable, but they uh, will get them only after they have earned them. So I did, I got two things for each kid, so I got six things, and then I got two little cross stitches for myself um, that were like super clearance. They were like 80 cents a piece, and they had the um, Aida cloth and uh, the uh, string, and or string, embroidery floss and everything. So I got those. One of them says like live simply and has mushrooms on it. And one of them says you are the apple of my eye and has an apple slice on it. So I thought those would be good in the kitchen to uh, go with my whole vegetable-y theme. I do recognize that I have not yet finished the cross stitch that I started when I went out to my parents this winter and worked on again on the train this last time with the canning jar on it, but I would like to put some more effort into that. I've been trying to think. I seem to find a way to make all the things I enjoy turn into work, which is great that I enjoy the things I do 
it for like work, but um, like crocheting was a hobby that has turned into not a hobby. I mean, it is, but it isn't, you know? And I have turned sewing, which I also enjoy, into work. And I, you know, just kind of seem to find a way to turn all these things that I like into uh, even reading. I found a way to incorporate it into what is essentially kind of work. And both all the YouTube stuff is this weird hobby work hybrid. It I look at it as work because it's what I'm doing outside of my daily life, like, you know, home and family stuff, on a regular basis that I feel somewhat committed and like I have an obligation to, which is basically how I look at work. So that is why I see it that way. And I, I always kind of feel like I need to preface it because to some people I'm sure it seems like not work or like you shouldn't see it that way. And I know to some people it isn't, but that is how I am currently framing it in my mind. Anyways, that was a tangent. Um, I realized that I need to do more things for fun because that would be good for me. Um, and it would be nice to have like relaxing activities that don't become like this obligation because I view them as work. And so I need to find some like craft hobby things that fit. Oh, there's cows in the ponds up to their necks. They must be warm. It is 91 degrees. Sorry, cows and ponds is always a, a good and funny distraction. Anyways, I um, was trying to figure out which hobbies I have that I could do, you know, that would be not work. So, one of those is cross stitching, and I would like to put a little more time regularly toward it. And <laughs> I'm not selling cross stitching because there is way too much time and energy into one piece. Um, that yeah, I not selling cat and cross stitch not happening so that way I know they're gonna be for me also I would like to start doing some more quilting stuff like some pieced work things um, to expand my quilting repertoire and again those things would be things that are of a difficulty level that I would not be willing to sell them because well they're hard but it would be nice to get to expand my skills by doing some things that are difficult because it feels nice to push your limits sometimes. It's it's good for your brain. So sometimes it's good when your brain has to shut up so it can learn a new skill, right? Anyways, I went to Tuesday morning. <laughs> I got some things and now I'm driving home. It is 5.23. I should be home, I'm guessing, in about 10, 15 minutes here. I was gone longer than I expected. Clearly walking around Goodwill and walking around Tuesday morning took me a lot longer than I had necessarily anticipated. I could have gone right home after I ate. Frankly, I could have gone right home after acupuncture, but it seems kind of dumb to spend an hour in the car each way to only spend the time I had my acupuncture appointment there. So I usually try to go out to lunch. Plus I figure it's good for me to do something by myself. I don't do a lot of things by myself. I mean, I do more things by myself now than I did not long ago, but for about the last um, eight years of my life, I have done hardly anything alone outside of my house, which for the most part, I'm very, very okay with and do it by choice. But I do recognize that it can be good to have a moment where the constant yammering of other people ceases. Okie dokie, gonna finish driving home. I am listening to an audiobook right now. I started last night. I am listening to Star Girl, uh, not Star Girl, Love Star Girl, the sequel to Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. And I am thoroughly enjoying it. And it's a very short book. I think it's, again, like five hours. And I'm already like two thirds of the way through it. So we'll see how long it takes me to finish it. And I will tell you more about the book when I do the Yarn Tales segment on it after it is complete. Okay, driving! Well, it is 2.40 and I am going to go to bed here shortly. I just need to put a few things into the fridge because I just, I got, I didn't have any motivation or like energy to do things tonight. I didn't hit my like super sleepy thing that happens after acupuncture and I actually was telling my acupuncturist about that today, about how like, I tend to power nap the day I have acupuncture unintentionally because I'm just like, I, I can't 
function and then like 20 minutes later I'm like I'm good now let's go um I am feeling a lot better I just was really I just needed to sit here that's what I needed to do so I did that um I did also finish the owl this is the little front of the poncho and his little arms go right here and it's the bottom and then here's the back so he really likes it it's super cute on so that is one Halloween costume sorted and now I have somehow managed to promise my other kid I would make him a honey pot so that'll be another thing for another day but I have lots of time because it's not even the end of September and I don't need these done until the end of October so I can handle that okay to go put things away in the kitchen and I will see you all tomorrow nighty night